organic circumstance to deal with, and that's why we got all these cockamamie explanations for it. And Senator Lindsey Graham says when you hear more from the State Department whistleblowers this week, it's going to make you mad. Senator Graham joins us. Nice to see you, sir. It's going to make you mad. All right, before we get to the question of the State Department whistleblowers testifying on Wednesday, right. we have information that people from the CIA want to come out and testify, but they've been told by the CIA Director Brennan, specifically they will be polygraphed if they are tied to this. Do you have any information to corroborate I've that? I've heard that same story. I know there's some CIA agents reaching out. They feel frustrated. The CIA generally got this right and they feel frustrated about what happened that night before and after. So we'll see where this goes. Are these CIA agents who are on the ground in Benghazi that night or are these CIA um, agents uh, people with CIA here in Washington? It is my belief that at least one of them was on the ground but time will tell. All right, now The dam's about to break on Benghazi. Right. Um, you wrote a letter May 6th to the State Department I mean uh, March 15th to mm-hmm. the State Department Today you're finally getting one back, and, um, and it's from the uh, Thomas Gibbons Acting Assistant Secretary, Legislative Affairs, and he says, among other things, that uh, that uh, he says the department appreciates your interest in talking to the five State Department diplomatic security agents who survived the attack. At the same time, we have serious concerns about the welfare. We want to be careful not to interfere with the FBI's investigation of the attack. They go on to say, should their identities become public, they may become targets, putting their lives as well as those of their families and the people they protect at increased risk. Your response, sir? Completely unacceptable. The five people who were diplomatic security have never been talked to by the Congress. It's our job to oversee uh, and provide oversight uh, to to the executive branch. And look what's happened. Thank God for the House, Jason Chavitz and uh, Daryl Liza pushing this thing. So, no, we we want the survivors to come forward and and we'll protect their identity. We want to know what happened. Did you, did did the AR be talked to these people, do you know? I have no idea. All I know is that what we're knowing, what we're finding out is that the story told by the State Department, Susan Rice, the President himself, was so completely wrong and false. There's a reason. Why did Susan Rice and the President push this narrative that it was a spontaneous event caused by a hateful video? Because if the truth had come out seven weeks before an election, this was an Al-Qaeda inspired pre-planned attack, it would undercut the narrative politically that bin Laden's dead were all safer. Political manipulation is rampant here. It is no accident that the story told by the Washington folks, including the president, was beneficial to the president and disconnected from reality because we can't talk to anybody who actually lived through it. Now you got a guy coming forward called Greg Hicks. Now you're the first one.